In this episode, we're going to cover one of the most common questions you'll see on the internet, and that's can you use the customer's power and water when you're a mobile detailer? And thank you to our sponsor, Jobber. This is the one software we've been using for the last five years to keep our business running, whether it's to booking out our schedule, keeping track of the customer's information, whether it's sending automated appointment reminders, whether it's employees clocking in and out, we use Jobber to streamline our operations. I've been using it now in our business for the last five years. Like far before I became a sponsor or before Jobber became a sponsor of Detail Groove, I was a paying customer to Jobber. So if you want to get a free four... If you want to get a free 14-day trial plus a special discount, click the link down below and give it a try. So the question is, can you use the customer's power and water as a mobile detailer? I see it all the time. I think I've answered it now at least 100 times. Um, but every now and then, I just have to make another video or another podcast or something because I feel like so many people get stuck up on this one question. You know, as a professional detailer, meaning you're, you're getting paid to go and serve as a, cus uh, a vehicle, can I use the customer's power and water? And my question, my answer has always been unequivocally, yes, you absolutely can. I did that for basically the entirety of my mobile detailing career, which was from like, call it 2011 to like 2019, I was, you know, heavily using the customer's power and water. Now, the one thing that I did carry was a generator. So if I needed to use my own power, I could. But most of the time, I was at the customer's home location. And that means... I had nearby an electrical outlet that I could plug in my equipment. Um, so I, so typically, yes, I carried a generator, but I would oftentimes use the customer's power uh, and obviously the water. Now, even if I was at the customer's home location, I still might use my generator just because maybe the plug's too far or I need to plug in multiple things, multiple equipment. Um, so I would still use my generator. But for the entire, I, I, up until, until Lex and I started working together, I was always reliant on using the customer's power and water. Now with the water side, I just, I never really used a pressure washer until Lex and I joined up. I was always heavily heavy on the rinseless washes. I would use a garden hose instead of a pressure washer. Um, sorry if you hear all that, there's there's uh, the bay doors open and everything. Um, I would use um, uh, uh, the, the garden hose versus a, a pressure washer. The times that I would take a pressure washer, I would still just obviously hook it up to the customer's uh, a garden hose because I, I didn't carry my own water. Um, so to me, it's never been an issue. Like I've never had a customer say anything negative or not allow me to use their power and water. Um, and, and the thing you have to kind of tell yourself is like, if you have a customer that kind of, hesitates or doesn't want you to use their cut their, their power and water is that really like a customer that you want right like do you want to work with someone that already has that kind of attitude of like hey like you're supposed to bring your own power and water don't use mine right because you know it, some people will be like oh well are you going to give them a discount if you, if you use their power and water it's like we probably use like five cents three cents of power and water when we're on the job site so it's like yeah give them a, a, a two cent discount if they want right like no you you don't because there's no actual hard cost associated with using their power and water, right? Now, yes, it, it might be cumbersome at times if you're at the home location. And again, like maybe the water spigot is all the way over there and the electrical outlet is all the way over there. And, you know, you have a 50 foot hose, but the outlet is like 40 feet away. So like you barely have enough to make it by and you're kind of stretching the electrical cord quite a bit and it gets rather annoying. So, so that for sure. But I mean, I've, I've never like, and I've never had an issue as far as like going all the way back to 2012, 2013. Like I've never had anyone tell me anything that I couldn't, you know, um, like it's never been an issue. And when you're talking to a customer on the phone, you literally just tell them, okay, yeah, sounds good. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Right. Go through the conversation. Um, all I need is a, uh, is, is a uh, electrical outlet and a water spigot nearby. Does that work? Like it's just a simple question you have to ask. And, and, and to get their permission or, or to uh, confirm with them that there is an electrical outlet and, 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 uh, and water spigot nearby. Um, if you're in a, at an apartment, depending on the apartment, because I've been to many apartments, uh, uh, condo, studios, whatever, is that at some apartment complexes, they'll have electrical outlets throughout the either parking lot or at a parking garage, or they have a dedicated wash station. 
Now at the wash station, you know, I wouldn't recommend you stay there the entire time, literally like prep the vehicle, wa clean the wheels, tires, wash the vehicle, do all that. And once it's time to dry it, you move it off that wash station just in case someone else needs it. Um, and with the apartments or, 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 or condos, that's a little more difficult just because um, the, the, the customer themselves might not know. Um, if you, you can also do this at a, at a business park, um, some business parks, right? Like de depending if you know them, if you can ask questions, if there's an outlet nearby, if there's a water spigot nearby, like for instance, if, if, if we hired a mobile detailer and they asked us, Hey, do you have water and power for us to use? I would say, yeah, there's an outlet right in front of our door. Like, let's say like, you know, we were in a detail shop and we just wanted someone to come detail our vehicles. There is a outlet nearby right in front of our, right in front of the front door. And then there is a water spigot on the side of the plaza there, right? So would the detailer have to go and move the vehicle to the to the nearest parking spot? Perhaps, but it could work, right? Because there's actually four spigots they can choose from, which is four locations in this parking lot. Um, so there's always workarounds or, or, or ways to adapt to, to get it done. I mean, I've done an interior detail with no power before. Like, I, I, this is early on the, in, in, in my career, um, but it would, it was at the, where the person worked, it was in the empty parking lot. Luckily the interior wasn't that bad, but I didn't have anything to power my vacuum or like I, I, I couldn't power it. So I literally just took a, like a, a interior brush and like, I basically raked all the debris into a little pile and I picked it up with my hand. Like I did that on the interior. Again, thankfully it wasn't that bad that it was like manage, manageable for what I was doing. But that's how I did the interior. Like I literally, uh, 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 scr not scraped. I, I um, raked the, the debris into a little pile and picked it up and 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 and, and discarded it. Like that's just what I had to do, right? Like that 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 was a solution. It wasn't ideal. wasn't the most professional. wasn't the but like it it got the job done. The customer was still happy with the results. So, like if you're and not just power or water, but like anything, like oh hey, can I? Can I start my business with 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 just this Harbor Freight polisher? It's like absolutely. Can I start my business with this hundred dollar pressure washer? Absolutely. Can I start my business without having a, a, a mobile rig and I can use my personal vehicle? Absolutely. Like that's just a part of your journey. Like you just have to go through it. That, that's what it is. Um, so with, with the power and water thing, like it's it's an it's it's a non issue. Now again, if you if you're talking to a customer. And they start to give you like a kind of negative attitude towards it. Like really ask yourself, is, is that the kind of customer that you want to work with? If just by using their power and water, they're already giving you a little attitude or a little fuss or asking for a discount or wanting to negotiate something like that, just, you know, that probably not, I would say, right? Like it's probably not the type of customer that you want. Um, so again, like you're going to find yourself in, in situations where, when you're at the home location, you're on the driveway and like, oh, like, look, the the, the, the water spigot is right there. There's a nice uh, 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 garden hose hooked up to it. Oh, the electrical outlet is right there. Awesome. Like, it, it, it's super compact. Like, you're right there. You have, you, have, you have good space to work with. You're under shade. That's fantastic. Then you have other days where, again, water spigot all the way over there. Electrical outlet's all the way over there. Um, your, 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 your extension cord barely makes it. Um, your garden hose barely makes it. Um, so it, it just, it, you're going to go through both situations. Um, you know, for the most part, I would say on the, on most of the details that I've done at a, at a home location, it was all right. Like it, it was, it was pretty, not pretty decent or pretty workable. Like it, it just, it worked well. Like I, there wasn't many times where I was like in a, in a, in a very bad spot where like I couldn't get something done because something about the electrical outlet or the water spigot. Now there are times where I've gone to a home location and they say there's an electrical outlet and then I plug it in and then no power is drawing from it, right? Um, and then, I mean, when that typically happens, I just look around for another outlet. And again, maybe there's an outlet right next to the car, but then that one's not working. So like, oh crap, like, okay, there's one at the garage over there, but that's way over there and I can't really, you know, so that that definitely happens as well. Um, but if, if, you're, if you're waiting, if you're hesitant on starting your business because you don't have you know, a pressure washer and a water tank and a generator, like it, you're, you're just slowing down for no reason. Like you are holding yourself up from taking the first steps. And that's a great thing. Like it, it's just taking the first steps. Like I'm not here to say for the next seven years, you have to use a customer's power and water. But if that's what's stopping you from starting, like go start now, go make a thousand dollars and then go purchase your generator or your, you know, just making up numbers here, but go, then you go purchase your pressure washer or your generator, right? Like it, everything's a progress. Like it's just the way it goes, you know? And now in, in, in like in 2024, 
like it, you could i mean depending on your budget and such but like you can go pretty cordless for mobile or i mean for anything but for mobile detailing right because you can go and purchase a battery powered pressure washer right and i'm not saying that this battery powered pressure washer is like oh it's, it's just as strong as our Carter 1700 or, or our ar blue clean 630 no what I'm saying is you can have a pressure washer strong enough to, to just rinse the vehicle, primarily to rinse off the wheels and tires so you can clean those, right? Because uh, depending on the situation, what you're working on, you can do a rinse and wash on the vehicle, right? Um, so to, to, to get you by, to get the job done, you can you can purchase a battery-powered pressure washer. It's probably going to come in like um, like the, like the, there's different units, right? But maybe you just bring a water source of five gallons of water in your in your, in your your bucket, and that's your water source, and now you're able to rinse down the vehicle, right? Um, you can have a cordless vacuum. You can have a cordless polisher. You can have a cordless LED light bar for the interior. You can have uh, a cordless drill. You can have a cord like you can you can go pretty cordless to where you don't need a generator or uh, like a traditional water tank. Because again, with cordless, it's convenient because you don't fight with the cord. It, it's 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 battery powered. But then, too, you need a lot of batteries. You need to keep them charged. Batteries can get expensive. Like, that also happens, too. So I'm, I'm not saying it, it's it's the alternative. I'm just saying there, there is another solution or another path if you don't have either the space for even a 35-gallon water tank, the pump, the pressure washer, uh, the reel. Like, there's alternatives to this um, if you're just willing to look for it and such. Um, because, like, it just there, – there are a lot more – like, compared to 10 years ago, there's a lot more battery-powered equipment – that we can use as detailers to be self-sufficient without having traditional, you know, generator and water tank and, and pressure washer and reel and all that stuff. Um, so second point is also, I mean, not second point, but like you also don't need a big rig, right? Like you can use your personal vehicle. Now that's another question I get asked like, hey, do you think it's okay if I, if I, if I go to a customer's location in my personal vehicle? It's like, yeah, it is, right? Like I started out in my 2003 Toyota Matrix XRS, it was lowered, it had aftermarket wheels, it had a, a carbon fiber hood. Um, it had, what else it had? It had a, I think for a little bit, it had a bike rack. Um, so yeah, it's like, it, it was modified and such, but I just folded down the seats and I was able to carry whatever equipment that I had. It wasn't much back then, right? <laughs> That's when I first got started, but that, that was able to get me by. Um, after that, I upgraded to a 2009 HHR panel, which, you know, for all intents and purposes, it's not like it gave me more room, right? It was just about the same size as the Matrix, but it was more of a dirty, dedicated work fan. Um, and again, like that, that that worked fine. So don't don't put these like self limitations in your head of what you can or can't do to start your business, right? Like if you're able to deliver the results, that's all that matters, right? Like if I, if my interior is very dirty and I'm looking for a detailer to clean it. If he can reassure me and, and he can show me why he's the right choice, well, then that, that's all that matters. Like, I just need my interior clean. Whether you come here in a uh, in a Sprinter van, in a, you know, in a, in a, in a, uh, um, in a Transit Connect or in your, you know, Honda Accord, like, I need my interior cleaned, right? Um, so, like, you know, and you, you start getting into that conversation, like, well, yeah, like, so, you know, do you have a lot of online, uh, a lot of five-star online reviews? Do you have your website or your Instagram showing all your work? Do you have your marketing in place to generate these leads, right? Like, it's a lot more than, like, you. I could give you a, a van, a Ford Transit van. I could give you the extractor. I could give you the pressure washer, the, the, the water tank. I could, I could give you everything. And you're still going to come up with something to say why you can't start. Like something else is going to come up where you're going to be like, oh, well, uh, well, maybe I need to go get trained in, right? Oh, look, now you need to go get trained. Okay, here, here, I'll send you to go get trained. Well, yeah, but um, how do I do an LLC and, and how do I file my tax? Like you're, you'll always find something else to hold you back or, or to slow you down or you'll find another excuse to, 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 to why you can't start, right? So, so it's like whatever it is that you have, like just start with the most basic minimum thing that you can do and get started like that. So like if you have enough tools and products right now to go and offer a basic service like you know like like a maintenance detail like a, like a, a maintenance wash and a basic interior cleaning you can start with that. Like if you have your wheel brushes, if you have things to wash uh, to wash a car, if you have things to you know vacuum it and, and wipe down an interior, well guess what? You are ready to go into business. Like you are a professional detailer, right? And, and and to me I say a professional detailer because 
even if you can just offer the most basic services, you're still getting paid to offer those services, right? So in my eyes and how you should look at yourself is you are a professional detailer because the customer is expecting a level of professionalism from you, right? doesn't matter if it's just a, you know, a $30 detail or like a $30 watch or something. Like they're still expecting you to show up on time, talk to them professionally, explain what you're going to do, get the job done right, walk them through the detail, accept payment. Like that's still going to happen no matter what. So that's why I refer to that. Like once you start getting paid, no matter what it is to how amount to whatever service you're doing, you are now a professional detailer, right? Like if, like if, if you're, if you're driving on the side of the road, right? And your tire gets a puncture. If your only option is like some small little tire shop down the street that looks kind of iffy, right? But you really need that tire because you need to get it fixed right now so you, so you can go to your destination. If that little rinky ding tire shop greets you professionally, really listens to your needs, like it's, it's, uh, uh, offers a solution to your problem, does it in a fast manner. Like, although it might be a little rinky ding tire shop, you're going to be like, oh man, like that was a great place to go to. Like, oh, I'm like, I, I really appreciate them because I was in a time of need. I was in a rush and they literally took care of everything. Like, oh, that was such a good experience. Like that, that made my day better because they took care of me so well. Right? Like you're not worried about the whole rinky ding part because they were the solution to your problem. That's the way you have to think about yourself as a detailer at, at, at any phase, right? Like not, not just in the beginning, when you don't have a, a water tank or a, pre, or a pressure washer or, or a generator, right? But like at every phase, like you are the solution to them. And the better you can offer that solution, the better results, the better experience, and just the better all everything for, for both you and the customer. Um, so, okay, I'm going to end this episode right now. I just wanted to kind of specifically go after that question. Yes, it's okay to use the customer's power and water. If you don't like doing that, well, go get customers, make money by using the customer's power and water. And then when you have enough to go purchase whatever you need to purchase, purchase that and then be self-contained. I'll talk to you guys on the next one.